Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 582. There is hope for women with incontinence, urine loss, and irritable bladder. It's called m BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. Today we're going to talk about stress urinary incontinence and and, uh, irritable bladder for women. Uh, We will add men's pelvic issues in at the very end, but let's talk about, let's talk to the ladies about the fact that almost every woman who has had a baby, who has an active lifestyle, at some point in time is going to lose urine. Even if you haven't had a baby, but if you do heavy lifting or if you lift heavy weights at the gym, which I don't recommend for women just because it causes more stress on your pelvis and causes more urine loss. But if you have these problems, and after I talked to a group of people who had every age group involved, I, I privately talked to all the women. Everybody had it. I had women who were 35 that are wearing pads to go work out. They've had two kids and, and they can't hold their urine. So this is a huge issue. I mean, I, w- I went through a magazine. I was looking through Southern Living and every other page was diapers and pads and uh, things to use if you have bladder incontinence. So a woman's magazine that is advertising this, and um, there are a couple others. I was just shocked at how many people have this problem. Now, in general, if you have irritable bladder, which means this, which means your bladder kind of has spasms, oftentimes that is made better when we give postmenopausal women estrogen and testosterone. So that's often helped, but doesn't always completely go away. So women still feel like they have to wear a pad just in case. And basically the stress incontinence is really everything falling down through your pelvis. And because of that, testosterone helps thicken the muscles, thicken the connective tissue, helps bring that, make that better, heal it a little bit. But it doesn't always do everything, and so you still have to live with the worry of if you cough or sneeze, you may lose urine. So I'm trying to, um, I never knew what to tell patients before. I now have an answer for this, but I never knew what to tell patients because the treatment for, for irritable bladder is a medication like Ditropan or other ones that make your mouth so dry you can barely talk, you can't swallow. It's, it's very drying for your whole body, which isn't good for your vagina because a dry vagina is not good for intercourse. So basically, it may help the spasms in your bladder, but it doesn't help your sex life or it hurts your sex life. So most women stop taking that medication because of those side effects. As for stress incontinence, we have surgery. And surgery never let me not say never, rarely brings the bladder back to actual normal function. Either it's too tight, it's too loose. I mean, it's really hard to have bladder surgery and come out of it feeling like you used to when you were 30 before you had kids. So when I personally thought about these options, I thought, yeah, because I, as everybody else, have some of this, especially when I cough and sneeze when I'm sick. So <clears throat> you don't want to be caught laughing too hard either. And that's really, I mean, if you have to think about this all the time, you can't really live your life. So there, a couple lasers came out. And besides being extremely expensive, you had to do the whole treatment every year just to keep it going. 
And it was invasive. You couldn't have intercourse afterwards for a certain period of time. Um, I mean, it was something that I wasn't going to put my patients through for this reason. It didn't seem like it had so much benefit um, as, as drawbacks. So I was waiting for something else. I went to a meeting at the a uh, AMMG, which is an age management medical group, and I found a company making a, an amazing machine <laughs> called M-Sella, E-M-S-E-L-L-A. E-M means electromagnetic, and Sella is just, it's a girl thing, but some, some men need it too. So this machine uses electromagnetic energy. You sit on it in your clothes. You can't use your phone because it's electromagnetic, but you can watch television for 30 minutes, and it does all the work. It's like having uh, 10,000 Kegel contractions, you know, like you're supposed to do after you have a baby. It gets harder and harder as you get older. But it tightens all the muscles in your pelvis. So no pain, no weird feelings. It does feel kind of like you're doing exercise, but you're not really working at it. And six of these sessions over a period of three weeks gets almost everyone's bladder back to normal, even the irritable bladders. It's an amazing thing. I mean, I, after two treatments, I can already feel it that I'm much better. <clears throat> Let me go back to why this works. So women have usually have a round pelvis so that babies' heads can get through. So um, I'm an expert on pelvises since I delivered babies for 29 years. So the round pelvis has muscles that go across it and meet in the middle, and it supports everything in their abdomen, their intestines. It supports the bladder. It supports the rectum. Everything in this, the pelvic floor is what we call it, is supporting everything inside our intestines, every, inside our uh, and that, <laughs> abdomen. So as we, as we get older, the muscles get weaker and they start sagging. Our bladder starts sagging. Our rectum starts sagging. We start losing gas. We start losing urine. Even in some patients um, with particularly thin connective tissue or a, really a lot of babies, you actually stretch the ligaments so that the uterus, you can see the uterus from the outside. The uterus falls down. So um, <clears throat> in, this, in this case, this we are trying to tighten these muscles. Now, why do we have more problem than men? Well, first of all, our urethra is only this long when men's is that long. So the urethra angle, the angle between the bladder and the urethra, like this, keeps, our, keeps, our, uh, keeps us continent. When we pee, it drops down, the bladder drops down a little bit, and the urine comes out. If the support underneath your bladder is weak, then it's always like this, and urine can come out anytime you <clears throat> you cough or sneeze and have uh, higher intra-abdominal pressure than outside, so it can just come right out. That's the first thing. The second thing is that women have, in this sling of, of muscles, we have a very important defect or opening. We have a vagina. So all those muscles are trying to hold everything up, but there's an area where, with pressure, your intestines can push down on that, on that area and push your uterus out, or if you don't have a uterus, your vagina out. So we don't have the strength in our pelvis like men have. They have no defects like that. They don't have any openings. They have muscles that go like this and hold them up. Now, over time, their pelvic floor gets weak as well. They lose more gas. They uh, actually, especially if they weight lift heavy items, they can tear through those muscles and have things fall and, and lose urine. So yeah, that could be a problem down the line, but women usually get this after childbearing and not, it, it could go away over the first year. But if it doesn't, then it's usually there to stay. And with each baby, it gets worse. In the old days, we used pessaries. They were like rings or square things that you'd put into the vagina and leave it there to hold everything up. Uh, they're not used in general anymore just because people don't want to put anything in their vagina, take it out before intercourse, put it back in, that kind of thing, like we used to do with 
diaphragms, only we put it in before intercourse and took it out later. So that's kind of fallen into um, a category where no one knows how to fit them, no one how, knows how to use them. So we don't use that anymore. So now we're left with diapers or huge pads. And that really impairs most people's lives. People will stop exercising because they have to put a pad on. They're afraid of losing urine. They don't want to go to yoga class with a bulge in their in their um, um, leotard. So this basically does the work for you of 10,000 kegels every time you sit on it, and it stimulates the muscle to contract. So you do feel that. You feel your muscles contracting, but it, it goes up kind of like a cone, and it goes in seven, um, seven centimeters into your pelvis. So it's going to contract all the muscles around your vagina, the area around your labia, the area around your rectum, and the area around your bladder. So if you're female, it's going to tighten everything up, and it's going to bring everything a little higher so that you have normal function, normal bowel function, normal bladder function, and a tighter vagina. So this is, is an amazing, amazing machine that I was just waiting for because I have so many people with this problem. So we have brought this in-house, and we're planning on having half our female patients do this so that they can be continent and not have to worry about it anymore. So you, a half an hour sitting on a chair in your clothes, you don't have to do much. You can just except be hydrated, and meaning you have to drink enough water and have, then have your bladder empty. Then just sit there, watch TV or, or read a book, and then it's over. And you just do that six times, and that's basically going to make most women continent. If you have complete prolapse, if your bladder's hanging out of your vagina, which I know sounds awful, but it happens. I mean, I used to do hysterectomies and have a urologist come in for bladder repairs on those patients because I didn't have anything else. Um, but um, And that usually worked. It just wasn't perfect. So that's not going to be ideal for this. I don't believe that it's going to actually bring your uterus all the way up to the top of the vagina where it used to be. But it should make it a little better and a little bit more comfortable for you to have intercourse. There is, um, this machine does have settings for women who don't have any bladder problems or have already had them fixed, don't have any rectal problems, but who have a large opening for their vagina because they had so many children, especially if they didn't have episiotomies, because vaginas don't just come back to the old size, like before you had babies, um, unless you have an episiotomy. And the episiotomy helps the vagina not stretch so much. So this, the trend in not having an episiotomy that came in, I don't know how many years ago, um, was really detrimental to the future, the future um, health or bladder health or vaginal health, sexual health of uh, women because it stretched their vaginas out except if you were under 20 when you had your babies. Then it seems to go right back. But after that, if you're having babies from um, vaginally and no episiotomy, it often, and if your baby's normal size, it often would stretch the vagina. So I'd see vaginas that were this big. Now, unless your husband's unusually um, gifted, that's not going to feel like anything to you and because you don't, it just doesn't come in contact with the, with the penis. So this machine on a separate setting, if you don't have any bladder problems, on a separate setting will help tighten the vagina. And so it has a second use for those of you who don't have bladder problems but do have a problem feeling intercourse. Um, the only thing that I can say is contraindicated. If you have a pacemaker or a pain, any kind of implantable metal device, you can't use it. If any device or anything in your body that you are told you can't have an MRI, then you can't have an electromagnetic procedure. So that's basically the biggie. If you have piercings, you got to take those out. If you have jewelry on, you have to take that off. If you have a, um, 
a watch or especially an Apple watch or another watch that has um, magnetic kind of uh, operation, you have to take that off. So we require, you don't have to disrobe unless you have a metal zipper or if you have, if you have um, a ring in, in your clitoris, it has to come out. That would burn you if you left it in. Um, if you have a, um, a metal IUD, a copper seven or a copper T, uh, those IUDs, you cannot do this procedure because they'll um, conduct heat. And that is not what you want. Morenas are fine, but the metal IUDs are not. So I would suggest that either change your IUD or get a different type of procedure that doesn't require electromagnetic energy. You also can't do this while you're pregnant. You can't do it while you're nursing. Partially, the pregnancy is obvious, but the nursing is usually because you don't have the same elasticity in your, in your or you have less elasticity so that you can't heal as well uh, while you're nursing. So we want you to be well past nursing your baby before you have this done. Um, if you have heart disease, which gives you heart failure uh, or pulmonary insufficiency, you should not have this procedure because it, it, it basically has byproducts from your muscles like lactic acid that are going to go into your bloodstream and have to come out of your body and we don't want to overload it. If you have edema, like your whole, both legs are swollen, we don't want to do that because we need your, your lymph system working to actually get rid of any byproducts. If you're on anticoagulant therapy, we, uh, we shouldn't do this with the skin, skin tightening, which comes with a, a second uh, machine for muscle mass, and I'll talk about that next week. Um, if you have a malignancy that's untreated, or um, a fever, or sepsis, or you're not well, you shouldn't do this. Um, if you just had surgery and you're not recovered yet, you shouldn't do it. Any skin sensitivities or, or skin um, diseases in the area that around your bottom, we shouldn't do that either. So there are some things that preclude you from using this, but honestly, that's not that many for most women. Most women are healthy, and they just need to be able to hold their urine in. And you're not going to go to your doctor and talk about that unless you're very comfortable with your doctor because it's embarrassing. Who wants to talk about, oh, I can't, I can't hold my urine, I have to wear a diaper? Nobody wants to talk about that. And if you worry that while you're sitting on this machine, and we don't want you to have a, um, a, you can have a tampon in, but we don't want you to be on a thick pad or diaper, we can actually put down just a, a thin chucks so that you don't have to have something thick between you and the machine that is going to actually decrease your ability to have a good result. So we now have something that actually naturally stimulates the muscles in your pelvis to get tighter, get higher, and lift everything up uh, that is in your abdomen and pushing down and making your bladder push down. Uh, it also, is, it'll tighten all the orifices that are there, the, the vagina, the rectum, and the urethra. It will actually uh, tighten the muscles in the vagina and help both, both um, the bladder and the, uh, it's a, a second type of, uh, or a second setting. Both of the bladder will also tighten the vagina, but if that's all you're going for, we'll just do the vaginal tightening on, on level two, and we'll do that without the bladder stimulation. So we can take care of this. You have to go, you have to have three weeks where you can have two treatments each week in succession. You have to be well hydrated. You have to take off all your metal, but that's really it. And we just have you sit there and we say, put the screen up and say, have, have a nice time. We'll be, sit, we'll be out at the desk. Tell us if you need anything. So it's really pain-free and really care-free. So... If you have urine loss, don't, ha don't do that anymore. You, you will actually make up for a, a lifetime of diapers 
by doing this. It's called m -Sella. it's six treatments. You should have some maintenance in between, uh, like a yearly maintenance, two to three times a year maybe. Depends on how bad your urine loss was to begin with. And then, <clears throat> and that is half as expensive as the treatment itself. So please look at our website or call us. And we have the m -Sella machine, we're ready to roll, and we're ready to fix your bladder and stop all kinds of incontinence. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.